Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about why so many Christians just don't understand the elemental truths of the gospel. They're completely lost when it comes to things like the authority of the believer, understanding scripture when they read it, getting prayers answered. It's just like, what is going on in churches that people are so lost? And this isn't to say that you're a bad person if you're in this situation. It's to say, church, you are dropping the ball because they're not teaching you this one thing. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses, so you're notified of a new gospel message. Because, of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel. And they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses. So let's get started. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is part of the Summer Extravaganza series called Prayer University that I'm putting on with my dad, Scott Stevens. He's an evangelist, so it's just us talking back and forth about this specific topic that churches never cover. And, you know, churches, they can talk all day long about live your best life. They can talk about in other churches, like putting on the full armor of God, but they never talk about this one issue that unlocks the key to you know, actually living your best life or actually putting on the full armor of God or understanding scripture or the authority of the believer or getting prayers answered or coming up against demonic strongholds. If you don't have this in check, none of the other stuff makes sense. But I need you guys to understand that with this whole series, Prayer University, what we're doing, uh, this is actually a series that builds upon itself. So you can't watch them out of order. It won't make sense. So think of this as class 102. Like in college, you have class 101, 102. So if you have not seen the first series, all links are in the description box down below. You need to watch those four videos first. And then this is the second video of the second series. So this is number two, not whatever demonic hand symbols people think this is. One, two, three, four, five. I'm counting. So everybody that gets all bent out of shape, like get out of here. Anyway, so this weekend, I, you know, I, I just get so frustrated because churches have really dropped the ball on teaching people this one topic. And so often you have people pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Or, or you have the Catholics over here, let's pray to the saints and hopefully they will pray for us on our behalf or, the, you know, praying to Mary so that Mary will pray on your behalf. None of that's scriptural. Yes, praying for other people, that's scriptural. But at the same time, you know, we can't rely on other people's prayer lives to get us to the place that we need to be. We can't constantly rely on other people to tell us, oh, what does God mean when he shows me this? Or I had this dream. Or why am I not getting prayer answered? You need to have that relationship with God. You need to develop that so you can go to him and ask. We have one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. It's not your best friend over here. It's not your pastor. You can go directly to God. And so many churches aren't teaching this. Because you know what? When Jesus was on the cross and he gave up the ghost, what happened? The veil in the temple ripped all the way down, showing that we now have that relationship with God where we don't have to have a high priest that goes before us to offer our prayers and petitions. We have a direct line to God now. We can ask him ourselves. And so often today, Christians, they just rely on the prayers of other people. And it's like, yo, Jesus has given you all the same authority. Like, we have the authority to speak out over certain things. We have the ability to pray to God to give us a word of knowledge, to understand what he's trying to tell us for uh, a word of knowledge to speak into other people's lives. But so often, because churches don't teach this, and there is a reason they don't teach this, it's because if you are going to God directly, you're not necessarily relying on them to give you an answer where they like to interject themselves into things that, you know, they really don't have any business interjecting themselves into. If you have a problem, you can go directly to God with it. You don't have to rely on other people. If you have problems in your life, yeah, we can come together as a group and pray for it. But in the end, you have the authority to speak out over these things. And we serve a supernatural God. And there are supernatural beings in this world that are causing you problems. And if you don't have your armor activated, if you don't even know what the pieces of the armor are, 
You are going to be so beaten up by Satan. You're going to be so confused that you're going to be ineffective for the body of Christ. And I don't want that for you. That's why we're doing this series, because if you don't have this part in check, if you don't have this sorted out, you're not going to understand any of the rest of the Bible. You're not going to understand what God has in store for your life. And if you don't know what God has in store for your life, number one, you can't obey him. And number two, you can't go out and do it. So you're going to be lost. You're going to be ineffectual. And when the judgment of believers comes, you're going to be sitting there being like, well, I had your, your mina wrapped up in a napkin and a handkerchief. And Jesus is not going to be pleased because we have a job to do here on earth. We are here to bind the strong man and plunder his home. The strong man being Satan, his home being earth, the plunder being other souls that we are here to bring with us to Jesus Christ through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Nobody comes to Jesus but through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So this is again part two. I'm gonna have a one minute kind of like intro just a refresher for you guys. But again, this is me and my dad, Scott Stevens, where we are talking about the gift of tongues and spiritual warfare. We are going to be getting into this topic pretty heavy over the next couple videos. So let's just jump right in. You know, if, if, if you aren't spending time praying in the spirit where you're getting the revelation, where you understand, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ or the word of God that, that, that he, he wants to bring alive and, and, and make you understand if you have no understanding, if you're not spending time in prayer, you're not going to have that. And, and like you said, you're going to be like Swiss cheese. You're going to be so shot up with a fiery dart to the devil. I mean, my God, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, they're in. They, they ain't got nothing on, on what the devil Hey, their do. car is in Nevada. I've seen uh -huh. their car. That thing is wrecked. That thing yeah, is well, blown it, it up. Ain't nothing compared to what the devil's going to do to you if you, if you don't spend time in, in God's presence. Absolutely. And then people blame God. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? God says, uh, new phone, who dis? So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, this isn't God's fault that you have, you know, you don't spend time with them and then bad things happen and then you blame it on God. Then you fall away and then you end up going to hell because you've rejected God. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, a foolish virgin. Right. In verse 18, it, after you've gotten all suited up and you're ready to go, he says, the way you do it, when you take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, he says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions. How do I do that? How do I pray in the Spirit? You know, it's, Pray it's, without ceasing. Oh, yeah, pray without ceasing. <laughs> that means like every time you tell it, <clears throat> you know, there should be a prayer coming out of your mouth. Man. And this is the beauty of tongues. Your mind doesn't have to know what's going on. And this is how you build yourself up on your most holy faith, Jude 20. Praying in the Holy Spirit. And praying in the Holy Spirit, you keep yourself in the love of God. And that's the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Well, if you're praying in the Spirit, one of the cool things is just by the act of praying in the Spirit, you're acknowledging God. James said that the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. It's the hardest to control of all the muscles that are in the body. I mean, when somebody does something wrong to you, the first thing you want to do in your flesh, in the natural man, is you want to curse them. Man, I've done that and I've embarrassed myself uh -huh. when you want to take retribution yourself. And I, I already curse. did a video about it, how I made an idiot of myself. But, um, yeah, I mean, the flesh, even if you're a Christian, I mean, it's still it's still pretty powerful. But, but see, life, and death are in the tongue are in the power of the tongue i like what james said he said man with a tiny rudder you can turn a huge ship i mean you're talking about this thing that's two foot wide can take a massive ship that weighs a million times what it does and turn it in the whatever way that rudder goes that's the way the ship's going to go your tongue has that kind of power to change a situation when you give control over it to the Holy Spirit, just by the very act of saying, Holy Spirit, God, I don't, I don't know everything, but I'm just, if, if nothing else, I just want to acknowledge you and I'm trusting you and the, the words that come, I'm going to let you 
give the meaning to them. I'm going to let you give the utterance. I just yield myself as an act of faith right now that I'm trusting you and, and, and I want to be used by you. And as you spoke the worlds into existence by the word of your mouth, use my tongue to speak your life into the lives of other people and for the kingdom of God. And then just like I said, just under you, when you're doing that, you consciously, man, the only reason I'm doing this right now is because I believe God, you are with me right now. You're in me. You're with me. And I recognize your presence right now. So just doing that by I'm driving down the road. And as I'm going down the road, I'm acknowledging God, you're with me right now. And I don't understand. And I'm praying that you give me the interpretation, but I know we're speaking mysteries right now. But just that act alone, just that act alone, it is, it's, it's, it's not like you're just walking around with a blank mind all the time and you just, I mean, you're, you're having to focus a little bit just to do that action right there. You're giving place to God. You're saying, God, use me, operate through me. Uh, let's, let's don't let any time be wasted right now. And I'm telling you what, you're providing the soil for the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, discerning of spirits. Uh, supernatural faith to go raise the dead, setting up gifts of healing. You're setting up miracles, something like you're, you're averting danger, something like, like we heard the other day, or just making the word of God become more alive to you. You're getting revelation so that, because how do you, you know, people don't understand what faith is. Faith is just a response to something that has been said or something that has been done. If God has said something to it, the way you respond to it, you know, if you agree with it, if you believe that, then you your response is in agreement with it. If you don't, then your response is the opposite, or it says, I don't believe that. Your actions do. If you're going to have faith in what God has said or done, you've got to know. You've got to, to be aware of what he said or what he's done. But you, you were talking earlier about you know, how are you even going to be able to pick up the shield of faith when you don't even know what God's word is? If you haven't spent time in, in the way you're going to develop faith in God's word is he's going to reveal it to you in prayer. Right. The more time you spend in prayer, the deep calling unto deep, the, his spirit's going to commune with your spirit. You're going to begin to understand things that you never knew before, but it, it, it's birthed out of that prayer in the spirit first. Absolutely. I saw somebody that said that when they started reading the Bible, that they started having more doubts about Jesus. And you can tell just from the way they worded what they said, they have no prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because spending time in God's word should have the Holy Spirit prompting you to show you certain things. But if you are just reading it blindly without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's not going to make sense. And you're going to have those doubts because... Satan will trip you up. He's always in your ear. Well, that's the parable of the seed in the soil. And as soon as he can, he wants to come down and, and, and grab that. That's why it's so important when you're praying in the spirit, then you'll, you'll, like I said, he'll kick into intercession on you, on your friends and your loved ones and people that you're going to come into contact with. And that's going to be what, that's the difference maker in their life is that time that you stood in the gap and prayed for them. But you're not even going to have an unction for that, or you're not going to have, that deep fervency and, and desire unless you've spent time praying in the spirit first of all supernatural faith that can raise the dead that's when you'll be ready to drive out that i mean all these other things it, i can tell the the strength of a person's ministry is not how many people show up at his churches what kind of an influence for the kingdom of god do they have right i can tell you everything you need to know about a person is determined by their prayer life if a minister has no miracles happening, no healings are taking place. He's going to have a giant church. <laughs> you know, he's on PBS doing some make your life better, you know. Right. You can put up a video on Christian weight loss or something like that, and people will flock to it. You know, they're interested in that. There's nothing spiritual about that subject. They love the stuff you, about the flesh that has it, the appearance of religiousness. It has right. the appearance of righteousness. Or even philosophy or, or some right. you know, nonsense where you, you know, a little bit of knowledge puffs up. 
but it's that time that you spend praying. And if you don't have spiritual prayer at the forefront, like Paul said, first of all, I will pray with the Spirit. Subsequently, I will pray with the understanding. But the Spirit comes first. And, you know, that that's why it talks about here in Ephesians chapter 6. It's so neglected, like the missing ingredient. I mean, you have sermons being preached all the time about the full armor of God. How much have you heard, first of all, about the principalities and the powers and the, the spiritual wickedness and the heavenly realms and stuff like that, where you're talking about archons? The, we have deliverance churches, and we're talking about delivering people from demons, and man, that is, we that's a ministry. Right. Uh, and, and it's important, but the type, most people don't understand in the kingdom of darkness, demons, these Rephaim, the disembodied spirits of the Rephaim that are the, the children of the Nephilim who went into women, they're flunkies. Right. They're the ragamuffins. They're, I mean, they're, this is low-level idiot stuff. These are the inbred country bumpkins that brush their tooth, you know. Right. When you're talking about these things like the prince of Persia that resisted Michael for 21 days— and the Prince of Greece and different things along these lines, there, there's some levels of things that are going, and they're operating in the world today and behind the governments of the world today. Satan's the god of this cause, this uh, system that, that's... Right, I mean, this is why right he now. was able to say to Jesus, you know, I've been given authority over these things, and I'm going to mm -hmm. give you these kingdoms and this and that and all this other yeah. stuff. He's the the god of this world, and people don't understand it. People try to argue against it, and it's like, no, this is why he took Jesus up to these high places. Mm -hmm. But if we get down here, we get all suited up with the armor. We hear all these sermons every year preached on the armor of God. Taking it, but but how much is there spent? How much time spent on the prayer side of it? And even Jesus, when he entered the temple. He said, uh, he runs out the money changers, and he says, that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer. But you've made it a den of thieves and robbers. There's a spiritual warfare that is taking place. And as soon as you start praying in the Spirit, like I said, it was around March of 1987, about six months before you were born, when the Holy Spirit fell upon me, embraced me, and I was praying in other tongues, baptized in the Holy Spirit. After that happened, my knowledge of the scriptures, my ability to understand and retain, it just accelerated exponentially. It went off the charts. And I was going out. I was leading teams of people in the streets of Dallas. Wasn't trained, but I was just growing so much. And because I, nobody explained to me how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was taking all these people that were already believers on the streets. And, man, I was getting them you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, when I say filled, I'm talking about they, they were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want people to understand you don't have to go to seminary to understand this. You do, God uses regular people for his mm -hmm. purposes. You don't have to be trained, oh, I'm slow of speech, I'm slow of tongue. You want to say that, you're going to get God real upset, just like Moses did, because God doesn't care about all of this stuff. He can use anybody, and he will use anybody. But go ahead. Absolutely. The stuff that Paul got in his gospel, he didn't get it from Gamaliel and the other great teachers. He went three years down in the desert of Arabia. And that's, you know, <laughs> something's going on down in Arabia because that's where God gave the law to Moses. And I think that's why Islam set up its center down there, too. That's why Shaitan <laughs> yeah, came the, the to Muhammad. Yeah, the word that was given there, the devil hates it, so we can't take it out on on. He'll twist it. God, I'll curse the land, or I'll do whatever I can. Anybody comes near this place, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get get so much confusion going there that they're not gonna know how to handle it. I'm, remember, I'm really gonna focus it there. Remember, but. Muhammad said that he didn't know if it was a an angel or a jinn, a demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, they fight the word of God down there, and then what does God do? He sends he sends Paul down there and says, "I'm gonna send you down here too because I like to speak down here." Uh, and he gives him the gospel of grace. But he received that revelation. He didn't get it from any man. He got it from God. Right. And um, when you spend time, God's going to show you things in the Word that nobody else has ever seen. And they're just there for you so that you can impart that gift to the rest of the body. 
that revelation to the rest of the body. But if you don't spend time in prayer, you're I, I'm upset with you because you've cheated me. When I spent time to find out what I had to share with other people and you don't share what you have, that's wrong. You, you bring nothing to the table. Time. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you're taking from me. You need to, if I give to you, you need to give something back to me. You know, I see this all the time. People say, oh, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And it's like, who are you praying for? Also, not only who are you praying for, but are you praying over these things? Are you taking authority over these things? Mm -hmm. God has given you that authority. So many people want to defer to other people for their prayers. Oh, please pray for me. Are you praying for yourself? Are you praying over these things? Yes, yeah. we'll all pray together as a group, but so many people, they, wanna, they want to rest on other people's prayer life. And it's like, no, you need to be bringing this stuff too to the table because all of us need to be putting on the full armor of God, the shield of faith. Like all of us need to have that so we can all mutually build each other up. Paul asked for prayers, but Paul was also speaking in tongues more uh, than everyone. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I hope this answered some people's questions because I do get questions in the comment section or I get private emails. And sometimes I would rather just answer it in a video rather than typing it out to you. And just to understand that Satan is the god of this world and you can't go up against him unless you have your armor on. You can't activate your armor unless you have that prayer life and you won't even know where the enemy is. If you're not talking to God, he is your eyes and ears in the spiritual realm because you don't have the ability in our human form to even see or understand these things. But spirit recognizes spirit, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. He knows where this stuff is, so you have to be able to listen to him and have a relationship with him if you are going to go out and take authority over certain things because he's going to be the one that points you into the direction of where these attacks, these fiery darts of the devil are coming from. And I want people to understand that because so many people pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And it's like, where's, I don't even know what to pray for you because you know what? I could sit here and meditate on the word of God and, you know, specifically ask what's going on in your life with the very limited information that you've given me. But what are you returning? Like, what are you giving in return? Because we're supposed to come together as a body and build each other up. And if one person is constantly trying to put out fires in everybody else's life, like they have family, they have friends too, like that they have to pray for. And it's like everybody needs to all come together for war against Satan. It can't just be one person trying to put out every single fire in every other person's life. And we need to work together as a group. And we can't do that if only one or two people are praying in the spirit and then everybody else is sitting around doing nothing except asking for everybody else to pray for them. I want everybody to be equipped for the work of the ministry. I want everybody to be able to build each other up with their prayers and petitions to God on each other's behalf. Because, you know, one person, they just, they can't do it all. So I want you guys to be suited up, ready for war, ready for battle, because God has made it where you have that authority. You have that ability, but are you ready to let the Holy Spirit take control. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share. And if you do have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comment section below, or you can privately message me if it's a private question. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.